Unlocking Gnomes and welcome back to my channel. I am here today to do something a little bit different and show you a tutorial on how to achieve a watercolor effect for previews or other such things on a blog. Um, specifically, I was asked to do this tutorial on Tumblr where I had done some watercolor styled um, backgrounds that I've been doing lately. So this is an example of what maybe it might look like. Um, I think this is kind of the one that sparked the thing. So there's the watercolor behind my Sims. So I'm going to show you how to achieve this look today. Um, there are some brushes preloaded in to Photoshop. I think I have CS6. Um, these wet media brushes I was using at first before I found some free ones online and they work fairly well. Um, so here I just have a blank canvas and it's important when you're doing these to always work in a new layer. Don't do it directly on a background and even separate strokes out into different layers can be helpful. Um, so some favorites from the pre ones here. Um, these two that are like 42 are pretty good. Um, I always make my brush larger usually, but they kind of have a, a nice wet look to them. Um, this one here has some nice kind of brush strokes. So there's some already in Photoshop, but of course I'm, <coughs> excuse me, sure none of you are opposed to downloading. Uh, so this one is a free one. I'll leave the link in the description, but you hit download and then there's a little countdown. I have ad blocker on it. I apologize if there's ads going on at this point. Um, and it downloads and I've already downloaded it. Um, but there's two ways to get it into your game. If you double click right here, it'll, and you have Photoshop open, it'll load into the current set of brushes. However, I found when I do that, let me actually, let me show you when I do it that way. So you'll find a couple of them down here, but most of them don't load in cause there's a bunch of them. Oh no, it's just the, there's no scroll bar. So you have to pull this. Well, there is a scroll bar. I don't know. That was very weird. I think you guys all saw it. It only showed the three and there wasn't a scroll bar that went down. Okay. So double clicking works. However, if you do it that way, you have to double click on the package every single time you want to use it. So to have it more permanently fixed into your Photoshop, you have to navigate to your Photoshop, go into, I think it's like the presets and then the brushes. Um, and it's different on everyone's computer, more or less, where you have it saved. Um, but hopefully you know how to do that or can look up another directions on the internet where to find it if you're not sure, if you haven't changed it. So I've already pre-loaded um, them in, so they are here. So again, um, new layer. I personally like to work with like a medium gray. Um, these are noodles colors. I work with the third color of gray, um, but it really doesn't matter. You could do just something, um, that will be basic. Um, and you can pick a brush that looks good. So each of them have kind of their own unique shape. Um, so depending on what I'm doing, I try to pick a shape that works. Now, one thing I don't like is for it necessarily to go up to the edges like that. So it has like that cut off. Um, cause I think part of the best way to get a watercolor look is to have the edges, um, kind of bleed up to the edges. So let's just say that I'm working with a banner. And so I like to, I'm going to make it a little smaller. Now, obviously a banner is going to be pretty small. Well, and again, it depends on if you want it to bleed. So for example, if I don't really care, I can do that. Now you can work all in the same layer, but I'm going to show you why it might be preferred to do a separate layer for each stroke you put in. So I'm just going to do a couple to show you. So I think it's kind of helpful to work in a larger window first and I'll add three of them on here for 
the sake of showing you. I don't think I did this one. And you can also put one in and if you, I don't know the way to do these without doing it like, um, but control T lets you transform it and you can rotate it or stretch it around. So I'll rotate that one. Um, so I'll show you this next part and then I'm gonna crop it so it's more of a, like a banner size. So. Um, if you go to any of these, so I did three layers for three different brushes. If you right click and go to blending options, you have two options um, to get some color in there. So you can do a color overlay, which then you can come up here and pick a color. Now I'm doing it this way with the gray so that I have flexibility to change the colors. Um, so I can do a nice purple there and the brushes themselves are really high quality so that already has a watercolor effect. Um, another option again you right click blending options is to do a gradient overlay and this I think looks even cooler. Um, so we can do something like this um, that's two toned and you can change your coloring so maybe I do a light blue and then a I kind of like the look of, hold on, a light and a dark. So I'll pull in a darker bluish color. So then you kind of get this fading going on. And then in the gradient, you can also change the direction. So I kind of like the lighter being on top. You can change the scale, so how much it blends. I think it looks better at a, a larger since watercolor is just very soft. And then another one of my favorite ways to do it, again, is the gradient overlay and to do more of a rainbow, right? And oops, when I do that, I typically like my angle to be a zero or maybe just slightly not quite so perfect. And you can, again, stretch it. But then you get a nice look and if I hide that, if you do a rainbow, it almost works well just on its own. Um, but you can add different layers. So a lot of it's just playing with colors that look well together. Like right now, um, three is a little bit too much. Like I think that looks really nice. Or maybe if I did that, it looks nice if I wanted to bring out more purple. Um, so you just have to be careful and play around with, you know, okay, do I have too much going on? Like, for example, maybe this needs to not be a gradient, it needs to be a color. And let's do something just nice and light. And you can also play with the opacity. So that looks a little better with three. So you just have to be aware and make sure what you're doing looks good. Um, so this would work fine. You could plop a sim down on front. I, oops, have some characters pre ready um, from my other thing that I did so let's oops take her so you could plop a sim down now I'm not really showing you so much you know you could add your stroke if that's your thing I always do like a white and I don't really have a set number um, drop shadows are popular you can play with the angle um, I usually like to change the color to something that matches the sim and I can either leave it on multiply or even do normal if you want it uh, more of a solid color. Um, but you can do something like that. Change the opacity. It gives it kind of almost even more of a watercolor because it, it plays on the watercolor that's already there. So you can add a sim on and then you can crop it to your desired effect. So that's usually what I do when I do like sim previews. Um, for banners, I was going to show you so you can crop it in on what looks good till it's a desirable amount. But I like working on a bigger span because kind of until you have the colors down, you don't know what looks the best for your banner. 
and of course you can move things up and down and around because they're on separate layers so for example maybe I decide oh you know I want to focus on the middle so let's move things so that they're overlapped more in the middle um, I don't know I'm just I'm just talking so anyway you can that's kind of the nice thing about working in a larger space is you have more watercolor to adjust and then you can put your desired text or different things on your banner and it's good to go. One thing to note after you crop it does get rid of the excess so do you see that harsh line? Let me grab this darker one. There's a harsh line there so if you ever um, crop and you realize oh crap I want it larger if you go to history you can go back up where it says crop and go one step above it and then you'll be able to move things around again so I hope this tutorial was helpful and that you can incorporate these beautiful watercolors into your images sorry I don't know what happened there with my sound so anyway I hope this video was helpful and you can incorporate these into your posts happy simming and photoshopping